Ilara had always considered her new house a dream come true. It was an old Victorian mansion with a charming facade and creaking floorboards that echoed with history. The moment she stepped into the grand entrance, she felt a strange connection to the place, as if the walls whispered forgotten tales of the past. As weeks passed, Elara settled into her new home, unpacking boxes and arranging furniture. However, an unsettling feeling lingered whenever she ventured into the basement. It was a vast, dimly lit space with dusty corners and a pervasive chill that sent shivers down her spine. Despite her attempts to dismiss the unease, Elara couldn't shake the sensation that something watched her from the shadows. One stormy night, as rain tapped on the windows and wind howled through the trees, Elara found herself alone in the mansion. The eerie quiet magnified every creak and groan of the old house. Curiosity overcame her unease, and she descended into the basement, armed with a flashlight. As she explored the labyrinthine corridors, the air grew heavier, and the temperature plummeted. Ilara's breath hung in the frigid air as she stumbled upon an ancient door tucked away in a forgotten corner. The wood was weathered, and the doorknob felt icy to the touch. With a hesitant turn, the door swung open, revealing a hidden chamber. The room was filled with antiquated furniture draped in dusty sheets. In the center stood an old mirror, its tarnished frame reflecting a distorted version of Alara's anxious expression. A cold breeze emanated from the mirror, and the temperature dropped even further. Suddenly, a whisper echoed in the silence. Ilara's name resonated through the chamber, and the walls seemed to breathe with a spectral presence. Trembling, she stepped closer to the mirror, her reflection twisting into unnatural shapes. I've been waiting, the ethereal voice murmured. Ilara's heart pounded in her chest as the basement's shadows coalesced into a sinister figure. It was a specter, its form nebulous, yet undeniably malevolent. Fear clenched Ilara's throat, but an inexplicable compulsion drew her deeper into the room. The ghostly figure spoke of forgotten memories and unresolved grievances, weaving a tale of a tragic past tied to the house. Night after night, the entity tormented Ilara, manifesting in unsettling ways. Objects moved on their own, and chilling whispers echoed through the halls. Sleep became elusive as nightmares invaded her dreams, blurring the line between reality and the supernatural. Determined to unravel the mystery, Alara delved into the mansion's history. She discovered that the house had a dark past, a tale of betrayal and loss that echoed the anguish of the tormented spirit in her basement. The more she learned, the stronger the entity's presence became. In a desperate bid to free herself and the restless soul, Ilara sought the help of a paranormal investigator. Together, they conducted seances and rituals, attempting to communicate with the entity trapped in the basement. The air crackled with energy as the spirit's story unfolded, each revelation bringing them closer to a resolution. As the investigator guided Ilara through the process, the entity's malevolence gradually waned. The basement once a chamber of haunting despair, transformed into a sanctuary for closure. The spirit found peace, its ethereal form dissipating into the unknown. Ilara, exhausted yet triumphant, stood in the basement, the weight lifted from her shoulders. The house, once haunted by a tragic past, seemed to exhale a sigh of relief. The echoes of the paranormal were replaced by the comforting sounds of an old house settling in the stillness of the night. With a newfound sense of peace, Alara continued to call the Victorian mansion her home. The once haunted basement became a place of solace, a reminder that even the darkest corners could be illuminated with understanding and compassion. The mysterious connection she felt with the house persisted, but now it held the warmth of shared history rather than the chill of unseen entities. In the quiet town of Willow Creek, nestled between rolling hills and ancient forests, there stood an old house with a history steeped in mystery. This house was home to the Harrison family, a mother, father, and their six-year-old daughter, Emily. For Emily, the Victorian house held endless wonders, 
Its creaking floors and hidden nooks fueled her imagination, turning every room into a realm of adventure. However, her most prized possession was an antique porcelain doll named Serafina. With curly golden locks, a delicate lace dress, and piercing blue eyes, Serafina seemed to come to life in Emily's gentle embrace. The doll had been a cherished heirloom, passed down through generations. It had witnessed the laughter of children and the passage of time, but little did the Harrison family know that Serafina harbored a dark secret. One stormy night, as rain battered against the windows and the wind whispered haunting melodies, a sinister presence found its way into the Victorian house. Unbeknownst to the Harrisons, a malevolent spirit, scorned and bitter from a long-forgotten past, sought refuge within the antique doll. The first sign of the spirit's presence came in the form of strange occurrences. Objects moved on their own, doors creaked open in the dead of night, and chilling whispers echoed through the hallways. Emily, oblivious to the paranormal activity, continued to play with Serafina, unaware that her innocent companion had become a vessel for something far more sinister. As the days passed, the doll's porcelain features seemed to twist into malicious expressions when Emily wasn't looking. Its eyes, once serene, now glowed with an otherworldly malevolence. Yet the sweet and imaginative little girl remained oblivious to the growing darkness that clung to her cherished playmate. Night after night, the spirit within Serafina grew stronger, feeding off the fear and innocence of its unsuspecting host. Emily's dreams became plagued with nightmares, visions of a shadowy figure that seemed to dance at the edge of her consciousness. In the waking hours, the once vibrant Emily began to change. Her laughter turned hollow, and a distant look clouded her eyes. Concerned, her parents chalked it up to an overactive imagination or the natural eccentricities of childhood. They were unaware that an ancient evil had set its sights on their daughter. As the spirit's influence deepened, the Victorian house transformed into a realm of malevolence. Shadows whispered secrets long forgotten, and the air crackled with an unnatural energy. Emily's parents felt an unexplainable chill in their bones, a premonition that something was amiss within the very walls of their home. One evening, as the family gathered for dinner, the malevolent spirit within Serafina revealed itself. The doll, once innocently perched on Emily's lap, began to levitate. A sinister laughter echoed through the room as Serafina's eyes glowed with an unholy light. Terrified, the Harrisons watched as their daughter's eyes mirrored the doll's eerie radiance. Emily's voice, now distorted by the spirit's influence, spoke words of ancient curses and vengeful promises. The room itself seemed to pulse with a dark energy as the spirit unleashed its malevolence upon the unsuspecting family. Realizing that they were in the grip of a supernatural force, Emily's parents sought the help of a paranormal expert named Dr. Victoria Blackwell. Dr. Blackwell, a seasoned investigator of the occult, arrived at the house with a sense of foreboding. The air was thick with an otherworldly presence, and the very walls seemed to whisper tales of a vengeful spirit. As Dr. Blackwell delved into the history of the antique doll, she uncovered a tale of betrayal and revenge that spanned generations. The malevolent spirit, once human, had been wronged in a love affair and cursed to wander the realm between the living and the dead. Seeking retribution, the spirit had latched onto Serafina, using the innocent guise of a child's plaything to sow chaos. Armed with ancient rituals and incantations, Dr. Blackwell attempted to exorcise the spirit from the doll. The house trembled as the battle between good and evil unfolded within its walls. The air crackled with energy and the temperature plummeted as the spirit fought to maintain its hold on both Serafina and Emily. In the midst of the supernatural struggle, Emily's parents clung to hope, their love for their daughter transcending the malevolence that sought to tear their family apart. Dr. Blackwell, fueled by determination and knowledge of the occult, chanted incantations that echoed through the house, each word a barrier against the encroaching darkness. As the ritual reached its climax, a blinding light enveloped Serafina. The doll convulsed, its porcelain features contorting with agony as the spirit within fought against the forces of exorcism. With a final desperate wail, the malevolent entity was expelled, 
leaving the doll lifeless and the old house shrouded in an eerie stillness. As the light faded, Emily collapsed, exhausted and bewildered. The nightmare that had gripped her was lifted, and the once haunted old house now stood silent, as if exhaling a sigh of relief. Serafina, now a mere doll with vacant eyes, lay forgotten on the floor. Dr. Blackwell assured the Harrisons that the malevolent spirit had been banished, but the scars of the supernatural battle lingered. The family, forever changed by the ordeal, clung to one another, grateful for the love and resilience that had seen them through the darkest of nights. In the aftermath, the antique doll, once a vessel for evil, was carefully placed in a wooden box, its ominous energy sealed away. The house, now free from the malevolent presence, stood as a testament to the enduring power of love and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of the supernatural. In the heart of a desolate forest, miles away from the nearest neighbor, lived a man named Richard. His solitary existence was a refuge from the chaos of the world, surrounded by vast stretches of arid land and endless skies. Little did he know that the silence of the forest held secrets far more chilling than the howling winds. Nights were silent, broken only by the occasional hoot of an owl or the rustle of the wind through the trees. Richard's modest cabin house stood as a lone sentinel under the moonlit sky, its walls echoing the solitude of its occupant. But as the sun dipped below the horizon, a haunting presence emerged from the shadows. It began with strange noises in the night, a tapping on the windows, a low growl that seemed to echo from the vast emptiness beyond. Richard, a pragmatic man by nature, dismissed the sounds as the nocturnal symphony of the forest. However, as the nights wore on, the disturbances escalated. One evening, as Richard sat alone in his dimly lit living room, a flicker of movement caught his eye outside the window. A figure, obscured by the darkness, darted past with an otherworldly swiftness. Unnerved but not easily shaken, Richard dismissed it as a trick of the light, refusing to let fear take root in his solitude. As the nights progressed, the encounters became more tangible. Richard would hear footsteps on the gravel outside, and when he dared to investigate, there was no trace of anyone. The air seemed to vibrate with an unnatural energy, leaving him uneasy in the solitude he had once cherished. One moonless night, the haunting figure materialized on his doorstep, a creature with the guise of a humanistic coyote, but a malevolent intelligence gleaming in its eyes. The Skinwalker, a shapeshifter of Navajo legend, had chosen Richard as its unwitting prey. Its eerie presence cast a pall over the once peaceful abode. Sleep became a luxury for Richard as the skinwalker tormented him in the quiet hours before dawn. Whispers echoed through the walls and shadows danced menacingly on the bedroom ceiling. The creature would mimic the voices of loved ones, calling out in the darkness, luring him into the depths of paranoia. Determined to confront the terror that lurked in the night, Richard sought guidance from the local Navajo community. The wise elders listened to his tale with somber expressions, recognizing the signs of a malevolent presence. They spoke of ancient rituals and protective charms, but warned that the battle against a skinwalker was one of willpower and resilience. Armed with newfound knowledge, Richard fortified his home with talismans and herbs, seeking to create a barrier against the supernatural intruder. The forest became a battleground between man and myth, as the skinwalker, angered by Richard's defiance, intensified its efforts to break his spirit. Yet Richard, fueled by a stubborn determination and a connection to the land he called home, stood his ground. Nights turned into a relentless game of psychological warfare, but he refused to succumb to the fear that sought to consume him. The haunting whispers became nothing more than echoes in the vast expanse of the forest. As the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, the skinwalker retreated into the shadows, defeated by the resilience of the man who dared to defy it. Richard, though weary and changed by the ordeal, emerged victorious from the battle against the ancient malevolence that had sought to claim his solitude. The desolate forest, once witness to the struggle between man and myth, reclaimed its silence. 
Richard, strengthened by the ordeal, continued to live in the solitude he loved. The Skinwalker, banished by a resolute spirit, became a mere whisper in the wind. A cautionary tale passed down through the generations of those who dared to dwell in the haunted heart of the forest.